more new releases. <laughs> Bits. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and we got the new Shadow Throne box. Uh, taking a look at uh, the new, newest and uh, latest uh, bundle box from Games Workshop. I guess they call them battle boxes. I don't know, whatever. Uh, so this has uh, Custodes and Gene Stiller cults, and you know, it talks about a uh, uh, secret, uh, nefarious uh, cells of Gene Stiller cults underneath the, the polar arcologies. Apparently there's a bunch of different ones, and uh, well, I, I read through the little story in here, and there really wasn't a whole bunch of resolution, to be quite honest. I mean, they just, they just went hunting, and uh, well, yay! <laughs> it's, uh, it's just up in the air. So I guess uh, I guess I'll come back to the story at some point. So this box is $170 uh, from Games Workshop, and it was allocated to seven per store here in the states. Which, from a lot of the retailers I talked to, they're like, "Well, I've, I've already sold all that at, at my store. I, I wish I could get more, but 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 I can't because you know I." I can only get what GW's given me, unfortunately. Um, it also did, looks like it didn't uh, sell out pre-order-wise on Games Workshop site itself because they had the pre-order guarantee up. And to be quite honest, since they put that pre-order guarantee up on their website, nothing has actually sold out, believe it or not. So they they said, hey, well, if this sells out, we'll, we'll kick it over to MTO. You will get a copy guaranteed, which is great. Um, you know, and we were definitely advocating for that, but I, I kind of feel like at, at this day and age, you know, people have changed their, their habits, their, uh, cycles, their circles, their, what they're doing and, and things like that. And unfortunately, I'm not sure that the, this type of marketing is, is working for Games Workshop right now, or it could just be that folks just aren't really as engaged in the hobby as they used to be with, you know, as soon as you find something you want, it gets pushed back, you know, because now we have these and we have points for them, which is great because we can play with the toys we get. Um, but we don't know how these really, you know, Gene Cell Colts and Custody players really don't know how these fit into their armies per se, because everything's going to change, you know, when their codexes come out, air quotes, early 2022. So a, a lot of uncertainty out there. And I, and I just think a lot of folks are disengaged and, you know, the holiday season, a lot, everybody's going to be hanging out with their families and stuff. So, you know, I just think, I just think it's, 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 it's a really weird time for the hobby right now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just so many things going on out there, but this box, um, there is value in it. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Here's the loadout on what you get. Obviously a lot of people are going to be wanting the blade champion and reductive saboteur, uh, because of their new rules. But again, we don't quite know how they all fit into everything. Um, and just, just on a lark, I actually went over to eBay just to see how many people were selling single blade champions and reductive saboteurs. And I found four listings. For, for Blade Champion, I, which was shocking because you figured a lot of people would get a hold of these, split them up, you know, and sell them individually. But I just don't think there's a lot out there on the market, to be quite honest. Um, so it's a, just a really weird dynamic going on with all this. Now, I was, I did notice this, this box is really thin. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't really feel like $170, which we'll talk about here in a second once I open it up and take a look. But let's talk about some values. So we've done a bunch of value breakdowns on this set here once we got word of it was coming out and what was going to come in it. And to be quite honest, I mean, there is in GW money, there is value in here. Of course, I say GW money because, you know, a lot of people have their opinions about the pricing of all this stuff. So $170 US, you get these miniatures, right? And, and another reason that I think, you know, some people might be waiting on this is nobody really knows the dynamic of how um, the sisters are going to kind of, the sisters of silence are going to kind of work into here. Now we've seen some of the data sheets that come in this box, but we don't know what the daughters of the abyss special rule is right now. So there's a lot of like question marks out there. It, is this, is this good for custody players, right? Do, did they change the Alaris terminators to be good enough to want? Because right now they're kind of not, unless you take them as a Vexilla, I suppose. Um, you just don't see them in a lot of lists, right? And the blade champion seems pretty good, but again, we don't know all the rules. Like we don't know. All these like katas and things like we know they're coming but we don't know how they work in we don't know if the custody still have their overall rules that they had before you know their army where i had special rules so we just don't know so you know there's a lot of question marks right and on the gene store side of things it's all kits we've seen in the past you know you've got the the covenant duders here or the bro coven i guess it's called um a pack of the new fight hybrids which are always good you know to build up your list you got the reductus uh, saboteur here uh, these guys are all together and that's kind of it. So like, it it has value in GW money, which you can see right here. Um, you know, we figured the reductive saboteur is going to be thirty five. We figured the blade champion is going to be thirty five. Could be as high as forty for special characters. Who knows? We've seen it in the past. Don't know. But you know, solid value. At least two hundred seventy three dollars in GW money value in this box. 
cost 170 so you know you're making 100 say you get it from your local retailer say you get it for 15 percent off you know you're getting an, an extra 22 to 25 dollars in value in this box right off the bat so yeah it's totally worth it um if you collect either of these factions or you can split it with a friend totally worth it right that being said let's dive into the box okay so back to the box set so this one's kind of weird like we saw what was it hexstone or not Hexstone, um, uh, Hexfire, where they just kind of like tossed all the shit in the box. <laughs> like, sprues, <laughs> bases, okay, cool, I guess. Um, really no rhyme or reason to it, or really not a whole lot of presentation to it at all, to be quite honest. It's just a bunch of stuff in a box. So, okay, cool. So, once you kind of make your way through it, and I think, you know, we, sh we showed you these sisters before, we showed you all the Gene Stiller cult stuff before, bag of bases, uh, the hybrids. The Alaris Custody uh, Terminators, we definitely showed you that here on our channel. There's all unboxings for that. Just kind of search for it. And then you get the two sprues for uh, the Blade Champion, the one sprue for the Reductive Saboteur. We'll show you that here in a second. Uh, then you get the little poster thing, which protects all the papers and everything underneath it, which this isn't, you know, like a starter set. So really it just kind of comes with ooh, an extra base down there. Um, it just comes with the uh, instruction manual and the little um, data sheet thing that shows the rules for these guys, which we posted most of this stuff already over on Spiky Bits. And that is it, to be quite honest. Now, I did want to point out, since we're gonna slide into taking a look at the paperwork here, I did want to point out a couple of things about this. So if you do read the story in here, it's really, it's, it, I mean, it's definitely worth taking a few minutes to read this story. So it's kind of like, okay, story, 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 they're on Terra, story, story, okay, who they are, and then um, story, story, and then it's kind of like a cliffhanger here, like the Reductus blows up the stuff and you're like, oh, what happened? I don't know. And then it was like, oh, pictures and rules. Okay, cool. Hey, what happened? Like, I want to know what happened. They blew, they blew it up. Are they all dead? What's going on? And <laughs> so you have to actually read. So you get to the rules and you have to read to right here. And they, actually the story goes into the mission, which is kind of cool, I think. Like, I was confused at first. I was like, wait, are they just all dead? But they're not, they keep, they keep fighting. So you gotta read the actual missions and then you get the conclusion. Well, not really the conclusion of the story, but you get, it, they kind of wrap it up. So it's, you know, just remember, you kind of gotta read all that and then you get into the crusade rules themselves. Then the data sheet rules, there's really no tells as far as like custodian overall special rules, unfortunately. There is all the new data sheets, but like I said, we don't know what some stuff is. Like um, the Daughters of the Abyss, we don't know what that rule is. We kind of know what this used to be, the, uh, an anthocycanum, but we don't really know. And also, I don't think they had the work grenades anymore on this either. No, I don't think they did. It's kind of interesting. So we'll just have to wait and see. They are core though, which is which is good because that's going to give you some uh, some uh, um, uh, options when it comes to doing actions and things. I think because they're you know small enough squads, cheap enough squads, or five five man squads, cheap enough squads that that'll actually help in the near future when they change up the the actions for the GT rules. Which you know because you're only going to take these other guys in squads of threesies, give or take, and maybe fives. But you know once you take a casualty, then you're then you're already at a disadvantage. So and that goes in all the data sheets and then the big. Um, the big uh, summary here on the back about what happens where it kind of brings it all together. So you just have to kind of read through the whole manual uh, if you want that story like, oh shit, what's happening? It's, you know, they're on Terra, oh no. Uh, but let's take a look at the, in the instructions, the builds at least uh, for the, um, the new models that is. So the Blade Champion actually has two different poses, believe it or not, they never showed any pictures of this. Uh, so he has a long sword or like a not not I think it is the same size blade, but then he I guess he pulls out his misery quarter. So I'm told this is called this is Spanish style fighting where the, apparently Spanish they fight with a rapier and a dagger. So this is like a thing, which is I had no idea. I was like, oh that's cool. What what is that? And, and my buddy was like, oh that's a uh, Spanish style fighting. And I was like, huh, all right, cool. But it looks like he's just like running through people like with his you know holding his misericorda, which is basically a dagger, and you know his his sword, his long his long sword blade thing now, um, which is kind of interesting. So it goes together left and right halves, and the feet are very dynamic and actionable. And he's got the little the little flappers, the the thigh flappers, we'll call them. And then you, uh, put the cape on. You could leave it off if you want to airbrush it and everything. Now, what I did notice was between the two different um, arm options or two different poses, you can choose one, which also means that they give you all of the arms, which is kind of cool because if you wanted to magnetize the two different sets of arms, I don't think there's an option for it in game like, 
hey, I take this and that because he just basically gets the Mizura quarter. So it's just like an alternate kind of style pose, which I think is really neat from GW because we really haven't seen that style of thing before. Does he have a Mizura quarter? I'm just looking now. He doesn't have it on his data sheet. Hmm. But he also, so he has a vault sword. Ooh, a vault sword. Okay. I don't know. But anyways, uh, so you could magnetize those with some little, um, what are these? One eighth by one sixteenth inch magnets. You would just need extra shoulder pads to glue on uh, your your other stuff. But imagine a lot of folks out there have extra. I know I have a bunch of extra custody shoulder pads from Guardians I might not have used or something like that. And also uh, Wardens, which I'm really interested. These are my like almost done Wardens. Um, Wardens never really got a fair shake, I don't feel like. And they're anti psyker in theory. So I'm almost wondering what the rules are going to be for them. I'm more excited to see what the rules for Wardens are than anything else out there, to be quite honest. Uh, so it goes together, and then you got three different head options, which we'll show you those. I think I'm going to vote with that one. Um, and then you can put them on a base, a little piece of texture there, tactical rock, so to speak. And then he glues down to the base. Now, I showed you this a couple of times. You can always use a little bit of this resin sand from Liquitex which will smooth out any little pieces of terrain, plastic pieces of terrain onto the rest of the base. So you won't have that obnoxious fillet or that obnoxious like, you know, piece of terrain and then it goes to like a smooth base. And you're like, what do I do with that? Well, you can use some GW texture paint, which technically already has a base coat in it. Or you could use that stuff because it doesn't, it doesn't recede, it doesn't shrink. There's no shrinkage to it. It just smooths out, goes flat, and it's got some really nice texture that you can work with. And I love using that stuff on any instances of things like this. Um, I think it works really well. Then we'll flip to the Reductive Saboteur, which goes together pretty easily as well. Uh, you got the little demo pack here. I'm not exactly sure how that works. I don't know what any of these rules are, to be quite honest. I haven't looked at it, but the model looks pretty cool. Um, so you got the, de the detonator arm. It looks like attaches to the body. And then I don't like this. So you put the arm on, you put the arm on down to the bottom of the legs, and then supposedly you're supposed to get around it and put this like uh, ammo pack or something on there. I'm not sure how that's gonna work out. Uh, set of arms, caper, uh, looks like her arm attaches to this uh, plunger, this detonator, and backpack of gear, two different head options, and that's it. And again, you could obviously use the resin sand to kind of smooth all that out right there. So let's take a look at the sprues and then put them together. So here's the two shield captain sprues, or not shield captain, blade champion, oh lordy. And you can see the terrain piece. The shoulder pads are pretty standard. We've seen those a million times on the Custodian Guard. And I can't tell which hand does what here, but they've got definitely, there's a lot of hands. <laughs> there's a lot of hands going on here, hands and arms. It looks like, oh, two-handed. So this is the two-handed, um, what was that, vault sword they called it. Misericorder vault sword, which is one hand where he's running through people. Um, one of the helmets and then the cape, back, front, legs. Um, thigh flappers with two different heads. Looks like cropped back hair and full head of hair, I guess. I guess that's what that is. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Pretty cool. So that looks pretty neat. And then let's take a look at the Reductus Saboteur. Um, so here's a Reductus Saboteur. Not a whole lot going on. I mean, two different heads up there. And it looks like this arm is all together. And where's that? Oh yeah, so here's the ammo bits that you're supposed to kind of go underneath and glue to the side here. I guess they go right there. So that's gonna be a little interesting. I don't know how that's gonna work out, but it, I mean, at, at, face, at, at, at first glance, face value, it doesn't look like a super complicated model to put together, but I guess we're about to find out. Okay, so first up, we're gonna do the Reductus Saboteur. So this kit was kind of interesting. Let me zoom in a little bit on it. Um, it wasn't too hard to put together, but yeah, it got a little weird where they were like, hey, put this arm on, and then you can see, like, there's not a lot of space here to put that little ammo pack in there. So that's probably the one um, point of, you know, I guess, the con to putting the kit together, I suppose. Everything else goes together pretty well, and you can see, well, there's a big chunk of flash right there, but as far as gaps and other flash and things, it's pretty easy to get together. and. You don't have to worry about a whole bunch. Uh, scrape down a little uh, mold bond right there. So overall, it looks uh, looks pretty good. And got her little uh, demo pack thing right here. Now size-wise, 
um, it compares, you know, it's really tiny. <laughs> so about the size of a Forge World Death Corps Kriegman, which is a little bit smaller than the plastic ones right now. And then when it comes to uh, Primaris, definitely smaller. So I'm not super familiar with the Gene Stiller Cult line, to be quite honest, in the first place. So I would assume it's about the same size as it should be uh, for those guys. So pretty cool little dynamic model for sure. Uh, and then the Blade Champion is pretty neat, obviously way bigger <laughs> uh, on a 40 mil base, way, way, way bigger. Um, it got those alternate heads too, so that one's pretty cool right there. And then there's a little, ugh, a little, oh, maybe I glued it down. I thought I left it. I swear I didn't glue it down on purpose. Nope, it is glued down. I guess maybe I put a little tack of uh, glue in there just so it wouldn't pop out because I've been known to lose a bit or two on the way to video. Well, anyways, I guess I can't show you uh, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the uh, different head options there, but I did punch them out um, just to give you an idea. Like that one right there looks pretty cool. Definitely got his hair flowing in the right direction in the wind. And then the dude with the, the head style with the crop back hair a little bit. And I guess it's more like a faux ponytail almost right there. Would be pretty cool looking too. So either of those uh, options. But the model itself, very dynamic, got a lot going on, got the cape. You could leave that off and paint it separately, completely paint it red, and then uh, glue it back on. That might not be a, a bad idea, I suppose, if you're, you're airbrushing it or something like that. And that would give you a lot more room to work with with these, uh, these blades right here. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think that might work out pretty well. And then, you know, depending on... I have custom uh, bases, so I'm probably not going to use this little bit of terrain here. So I'm probably just going to glue them down to uh, my... Uh, pre-made custom bases uh, painted up a bunch of extra of those but very very cool pose I kind of like this one because it looks like very dynamic like he's running through people whereas the other one is just kind of like doing the choppy chop so I think I would go with that one size wise um, he definitely compares about the same to the uh, the custodians themselves uh, the custodian guard uh, the sword is interesting because obviously it's not a sentinel blade uh, you could potentially convert up a sentinel blade to be it but it is specifically doesn't have a shooting component to it um but i suppose if you know you're like you know what i got a bunch of these guys laying around uh with some capes obviously because some of them do come with capes uh you could do a little conversion i don't think anybody would get bart hurt at you you just need a different maybe style helmet or something like that unfortunately but um yeah i mean it's about about the same size wise and things uh so i think he would paint up just fine and you can see the shoulder pads are um definitely wait it's this, is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. The shoulder pads are definitely the same. It's almost like they have this stuff in a computer and they just click print or something. Oh, well, that one's not the same. Where is it? Do I, I don't know. Are they both the same? Oh, they're both the same pad. Oh no, one, had, one doesn't have the gem on it. One has the gem on it. Huh, okay. Well, I hadn't noticed that. That's fine then. Uh, but either way, yeah, very, very cool model. So overall, I think uh, I think both the models are pretty cool and I can see where the respective players for each of those factions are definitely gonna want them. So that is it for this unbox and build of the new Shadow Throne box from Games Workshop for Warhammer 40K. Uh, still a lot of questions to be answered, but hopefully, you know, early 2022, we'll find out the rest for both of these factions. And, you know, I uh, imagine the boxes that didn't get bought up will probably get bought up at that time. And they'll probably also come out with these models uh, separately around that time because they just tend to do those sorts of things. So. I guess we'll find out here in, in the short term as far as that goes. So in the meantime, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos. If you liked that video feature, consider supporting us over at patreon.com and get back in the mail each month a miniature crate full of some of the stuff we review here as well as some of the top 3D artist designs out there too to help support what they're doing. Plus, discount coupon codes from some of those same manufacturers. They're yours to keep whether you cancel or stay on. Just It's totally up to you. Obviously, we want to keep you as happy as possible. So check it out over at patreon.com forward slash spikybits.